Hello there, my fellow Battletech aficionados, and welcome back to another lore video in this awesome sci-fi setting. Since a lot of you seem to enjoy my relatively recent super heavy battle mech videos, I figured today I could make something similar but for vehicles instead. Just like with the super heavy battle mechs, there are not that many of these either, and we're gonna talk about most of them today. One note before we begin though, is that I am very likely to butcher at least one of these names at some point, so I do apologize in advance. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Vehicle number one for today is the Destrier. This one is also the heaviest of the ones we're gonna talk about today, weighing at 200 tons with a top speed of 32 km an hour. The officially designated Destrier Siege Vehicle is an advanced super heavy combat vehicle which was first made by the Federated Suns in the first decade of the 32nd century. It was designed while the armed forces of the Federated Suns embraced a more defensive doctrine. The vehicle uses a combination of its staggering armor and firepower to attack facilities or catch unsuspecting enemies in a deadly ambush. It was first deployed during the Federated Sun's invasion of the Capellan Confederation in the Victoria War. One such engagement was during the conflict in 3104 on Spica. This was when a company of destriers were used to ambush elements of the 3rd McCarran's Armored Cavalry. The Destriers were also used as the last line of defense against the invading Draconis Combine armies in the late 3140s. The Destrier was designed as a hard-hitting, if obviously slow combat unit, boasting no less than 37 tons of hardened armor. To help overcome the staggering weight of all this armor and its drag on the vehicle movements, it has a 400 rated XL fusion engine. This engine is strong enough to tow its usual trailer called the Ballista and its array of communication and artillery launchers with its own trailer hitch. The main firepower of the Destrier comes from its dual-mounted Mydron Model L Long Tom cannons, which are backed up by a pair of Bright Blossom Extended Range Medium lasers, all of them mounted in the turret. It utilizes six GM light machine guns as a defense against regular infantry. Grouped in pairs, these weapons are mounted on all sides of the vehicle. It also has an infantry compartment to deploy infantry squads or battle armor as part of its defensive complement. To aid in the vehicle's protection, it also mounts a pair of point defense anti-missile systems, one to the rear and the other in the main turret. Among the Destrier's other equipment, we have a Guardian ECM suite, one ton's worth of communication equipment, and a single C-Free slave unit for coordinated firing solutions. The so-called Ballista Artillery Trailer is a purpose-built trailer intended to be used in tandem with the Destrier. It provides some long-range fire support and can act as a communication center as well. While this thing does not have its own motor, it does have a standard fusion engine to power its weapons. It has a turret mounting its main weapon, a pair of artillery launchers, which includes 40 rounds of ammunition. Backing these up is a pair of ER medium lasers. Just like the Destrier itself, the Ballista has the same arrangement of sponson turrets mounting anti-infantry light machine guns and fixed position anti-missile systems. It is armored with hardened armor just like the Destrier, and also includes case which protects the vehicle from ammunition detonation. Another feature of the trailer is its electronic equipment. It also shares a Guardian ECM suite and a Seafree slave unit with the Destrier. However, it does have a more powerful allotment of communication equipment to give it the ability to better coordinate battlefield operations. Vehicle number two for today, and the one I'll probably butcher the most in naming, is the Gull Topper, or Gull Topper, I guess, massing at 190 tons. 
The officially named Gultopper Omni Monitor is a 32nd century super heavy Omni vehicle. It was first produced for the Lyran Commonwealth and for Clan Wolf in Exile as a defensive garrison unit. It was designed and manufactured on the world of Ark Royal in 3102, and then it was mass produced to help fill up the defenses on the clan border. Initially, it was produced without any weapons, allowing for the recipients to arm them upon their arrival. It goes without saying that they are gigantic machines, notable for their impressive firepower and armor, but their slow speeds keeps them from being anything other than a defensive unit. Not the fastest of units, these 190-ton Omni vehicles' slower speed is due mostly to its 44 tons of star slab and standard armor spread out across its hull. Boasting 61 tons of Omnipod capacity, these modular plug-in weapons and equipment pods are split mainly between the vehicle's two turrets, 30 tons in turret 1 and 25 tons in turret 2. The inner sphere designed case as a permanent part of the vehicle to offer protection from ammo and weapon explosions. The weaponry for this thing is mounted exclusively in the two turrets. Turret number one is home to a pair of Gauss rifles, which are then fed by four tons of ammo. Turret number two houses the vehicle's big gun, a short-range long tom cannon and a pair of anti-missile systems. The long tom has been allotted three tons of ammo, while another two tons are set for the anti-missile system. A Guardian ECM suite is placed in the hull to provide some electronic warfare capacity for the vehicle. Its main configuration is very vulnerable to close-in attacks due to its complete lack of anti-infantry weaponry. Vehicle number 3 for today, and another one I'll probably butcher the name of, is the Teppo. The officially designed Teppo Artillery Support Vehicle is an experimental super heavy combat vehicle designed to provide support for frontline units in the Draconis Combine. First built right after the Jihad, this massive vehicle was mainly designed to be a regiment's mobile artillery battery and also provide some additional command and repair abilities via its pair of support trailers. Using the Ryuken Combined Arms Command style as a model, the Teppo and its support trailers would attempt to replicate that Elite Brigade's command capabilities for other frontline regiments. It was built on Unity at Pest Motors, and it is noted for its high quality due to each vehicle being, air tanks, handmade. The main gun for this thing is an Ikazuchi Type 2 sniper artillery piece, mounted in the vehicle turret, and a pair of Shigunga Arrow 4 artillery systems mounted in the front of the vehicle. The sniper artillery has 3 tons of ammo, while the Arrow 4 launchers have 6 tons, allowing for a wide selection of artillery rounds. A Sperry Browning light machine gun is mounted in the front and the rear to protect against infantry attacks. It also has three anti-missile systems, one in the front and one on each side. It is protected by air tags, only 20 tons of heavy ferrofibrous armor and case. Its other features include a one ton worth of communication equipment, a Guardian ECM suite, and an infantry compartment for security detachments. It is propelled by a 280 rated fuel cell engine, which allows it to move at 21 km an hour while towing. As mentioned, it also has two 75-ton trailers, which are the Tenmaku and the Bokosu. The Tenmaku is the command trailer featuring its own small fusion reactor as an independent power source. It also has 10 tons worth of communication equipment, a pair of C3 master computers, a Guardian ECM suite, and an infantry compartment capability, with a single trailer hitch mounted at the front. This one is armed with a pair of medium lasers and a pair of light machine guns in the turret. It also has three anti-missile systems and it is protected by 15 tons of heavy ferrofibrous armor with case. Meanwhile, the Bokusu serves as a mobile repair base and a cargo hauler for the Tepo users. This one does not have its own power source, 
and it is protected by 12 tons of armor. Its main feature though is its mobile field base, which is a self-contained repair gantry providing a comprehensive repair capability for a regiment's worth of battle mechs and vehicles. Finally, vehicle number 4 for today, and one that I will not butcher pronouncing it, is the Paladin, massing at 130 tons. The officially designed Paladin Defense System is another super heavy combat vehicle designed in the 32nd century for the Federated Sons. Built from plants captured in the Victoria War in 3105 with the Capellans, the Paladin is a strategic combat vehicle used for long-range fire support. While it was not usually assigned to the armed forces of the Federated Sons, which were fast-moving regimental combat units, the vehicle would become the backbone of the Fed Sons planetary militias. Once exclusive to the Sons and their allies, many of their number would fall into the hands of both the Capellans and the Draconians during their invasion of the Fed Sons in the mid-3140s. Just like the other vehicles discussed today, this thing is not fast. It does have a 260 rated extra light fusion engine, which is enough to propel it across rough terrain. Its hull is protected by 11.5 tons of Duralex special heavy ferrofibrous armor, and it does have case as well. Its pride and joy are two turreted Kalan Weapon Industries Vicar Long Tom Artillery pieces which can be brought to bear at a very long range. They are supported by 60 rounds of ammunition, located in its ammunition bay inside the hull. This 6-ton capacity is viewed as insufficient for a longer battle, so it is typical for the vehicle to tow its own ammunition trailers using its trailer hitch. For self-defense, the Paladin also has a pair of ER medium lasers and Mydron miniguns. And these, my friends, are some of the super heavy vehicles of Battletech about which I wanted to tell you today. As you probably imagined, these are big, heavy, slow and heavily armed, and you should not, under any circumstances, deploy them on the front line. Unlike the super heavy battle mechs we talked about a few weeks ago, these would not survive for long. Were you aware of any of these super heavies prior to this episode? Is any of them among your favorites? I would go with the Paladin myself, if only because I can pronounce its name properly. Do share your thoughts or stories you may know on these vehicles in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.